Hello again, and thank you for tuning in. If you watched any of my other videos, you know that I kind of go on these long, rambling talks that don't really lead anywhere. This is going to be no different. <clears throat> uh, today, what we're going to talk about is some stuff you need to know about the military, right? Maybe this is going to help you figure out if it's right for you. Maybe it's going to help you figure out it's not right for you. Maybe it's just something you wanted to read or watch or you're doing more research and you're trying to figure out just, you know, what what is the draw of people going into the military today? So I'm going to talk about my experiences and, and what I believe <clears throat> as, uh, as far as my opinions on is the military a good career option? Is the military for everyone who's the military not for? And then I'm going to do a follow-up video where I talk about and I bust some just really common myths that are out there about the military. So the first um, is what what benefits can the military have? Um, well, I'm going to tell you that there is literally a possibility that you can go from the lowest rank, right, which is E1, to the highest position of authority in the military. Now, <clears throat> it's very rare. It doesn't happen very often. You're going to have to apply to programs, get endorsements, and you're going to have to start that very, very early off in your career. Um, it's a, it's called Stay 21, which is Seaman to Admiral. It allows you to, after you meet certain wickets uh, and at a certain point in your career, I, I'm not sure the details. I think it's pretty much after you graduate boot camp, check into your first gaining command. Um, you can apply to go to college or the Naval Academy as a seaman, and then you immediately transfer in. Now, if you are interested in this program and doing this and making the military a career and you want to go as high as you can possibly go in the military, then I fairly strongly recommend the Naval Academy. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is <clears throat> enlisting and what all you get out of it. So before you go into a recruiter's office, know that there are ways that you can join the military as an E3, right? At least an E3. So there's a little bit of research that's involved in that and figuring out if you meet the wickets. At the bare minimum, if you join the Navy, I don't know if the Marine Corps is like this, but for the Navy, um, excuse me, you can get a book, a pamphlet, pass a test when you immediately go into boot camp, pass the PFA, um, and there's a few other odds and ends that you have to do, but if you do that, you're automatically an E3. Now this is a difference of about 18 months in career progression between E1 and E3, so um, you should talk to your recruiter if you're thinking about joining, about how to join as an E3. Uh, whatever branch you're going into, there's, there's a significant amount of pay jump in between the E1 and E3, <clears throat> and there's a significant amount of time. So the next thing, um, the military has a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful retirement plan. Uh, you retire, you pay very little for Medicare or medical expenses for you and your family. You get a large portion of your base pay in retirement. And now they have a um, it's called TSP, it's Thrift Savings Plan, and they it is the same thing as a Roth or a traditional IRA, depending on which one you put in, and they will match up to 5% contributions going into that account. Um, so they have matching, they offer you still a, a pension plan, though not quite as aggressive as the old one. They offer Medicare, and if you're not looking at making a career out of it, there's still options of what to do, right? So your TSP, that money will continue to accumulate interest. Um, so you should definitely still max it out. And it'll be a retirement account available when you go to get out of the military or when you go to retire at the age of, of 65 or 59 and a half or whenever you decide to start drawing from it. It's money that's gonna accumulate interest that you do nothing with and doesn't hurt you in any way, shape or form. It has very low administrative fees associated with it. <clears throat> the next thing that the military has to offer, um, it's a really good way to get free college. 
I mean, a lot of people sleep on this as an option, but we call it one and done, right? So you do, you enter, you do one tour of duty, then you get out, and it'll pay for your college. I mean, it, there are you know stipulations, but while you're in, you can use TA, which is tuition assistance, and you can go through even as enlisted, right? You can go through, and you can get your TA done. You can get uh, normally it takes about seven, six to eight years to get a bachelor's degree, right? So you can do that, you get out, you can use your GI Bill to pay for your master's degree, and then you got a master's degree while getting paid. Um, my advice though, is if you are looking at joining the military, work every day like you're gonna do 20 years. Even if you're gonna do one tour and then get out and never look back and never do it again. Work every day like you're gonna do 20 years. Like you're going to get as far as you can possibly get. Everything that you possibly could need to do uh, to be successful, that's that's what you need to do. Uh, qualifications, classes, schools, anything that you can get, go to them. Anything that will make you more uh, privy to advancement, do that. Because everything you do in the military will in some way, shape, or form transfer over to the civilian world. Um, and now since we're on the topic, I'm going to go ahead and kind of transition into some myths, right? So a recruiter is a good source of information, but a lot of the time they have numbers to meet and some of them are dishonest and will tell you whatever they think will get you to sign that paperwork. So I'm just going to go ahead and debunk some myths right now, right? So as like an E1, 2, or 3 and 4 and junior E5s. Um, you do not make a lot of money. So this whole, you're going to make fat stacks of cash, right? It's a complete and total lie. The military is a wonderful opportunity to make real money, but you don't start out making real money. The next one is like, oh, the girls love it. It's not really true, right? So, um, maybe, maybe a few, right? will date you just because you're in the service. Uh, or what you know, whatever you're looking for out of that, just because you're in the military. But it's not a majority of them. I'm going to tell you that. Do not be the boot dude that goes to boot camp and goes home in your uniform and starts being a creepo. We see it all the time, all the time. Don't be that guy. Just don't do it. Um, the next is um, like, you're, you're positive. it's super easy, right? It's really easy to be successful. Anyone can do it. It's not really true, right? So <clears throat> some rules that I always tell my new guys to follow is um, show up on time in the right uniform, ready to work. That's it. If you want to be successful, you do that, good to go. And ready to work and on time and in the right uniform might mean 5 o'clock in the morning in PT gear. Might mean 4 o'clock in the morning in PT gear. Mind me five o'clock in the morning in work clothes, ready to start working on some stuff. Um, but it's part of it. And then ready to work also includes attitude, right? Like you can't show up and be pissed, pissed off in the morning because it's not really conducive to actually working. You're not ready to work if you show up with a bad attitude. So I think you can really take that anywhere, right? If you show up dressed to work on time, ready to work. You'll go a long way, especially if you're actually ready to work. Um, then one of the other things that I, I always like to talk about, and this is a great forum, is um, you know just setting realistic expectations for yourself. So what are you trying to get out of the military? <clears throat> what are you willing to do to achieve those goals? What do you expect out of the military, and what are you willing to give them? Right? Those are all questions that you need to ask yourself and sit down because those are all questions that are that you can find the answer for rather easy online. And then make sure that your goals are realistic. Right? Like I talk to guys all the time and they're like, oh, I'm gonna join the Navy and I'm gonna make chief in um, you know, four years. It's like, hey man, you're you're literally not like what you're saying is just not possible based off of rank requirements and time requirements and even with EPs. It, what you're saying is just not going to happen, right? It's not possible with the current Navy regulations. So, you know, set realistic expectations. 
I'm not saying don't set expectations that are you know difficult, but at least set ones that are possible and that you can achieve. And then adjust your goals and expectations accordingly to as things change because it's life and things change all the time. Thanks guys, I, I really hope that you know this helps somebody or, or anything. Um, but the biggest thing is what I'm gonna say is talk to all the recruiters, right? If you're thinking about joining, like don't get sucked up in one branch, talk to all of them. You know, figure out what each branch has to offer. Uh, and uh, don't sleep on the Coast Guard either, call those guys. A lot of them are really good dudes. A lot of them are really intelligent and uh, you won't spend nearly as much time going from home, so. Don't uh, don't sleep on them either. Call them. They'll meet you. They still got to put people in the Coast Guard as well. So um, I know they're they're never there, but you can call them. Uh, they'll come in and meet you. Um, so if there's anything else, please just comment. You know, any questions you have, or if you know if I said something you disagree with, go ahead and comment. Right? Like maybe I'm putting out bad information and I don't know that because I'm not real sure about other branches and how they work. Like I said, I'm active duty Navy. I know the Navy really well. Never been a Marine, I've never been an Airman, I've never been a soldier. So I can't really speak to those uh, branches nearly as much. So thanks guys, I hope you all have a good day.